Renner, and welcome to FMT Heat. I hope you're all well. It's time for a change. Um, I've been having to think about it. I think, yes, now is time to leave the humpbacks. With a heavy heart, because I've really enjoyed it. Um, with them, we'll just have a quick look at a few things just before I click the resign button, and then I'll check when I need to be back for international duty with Marquesa, and then go on holiday until just before then. Um, and just get the the holiday mode to essentially start applying for jobs, and then I'll just filter out the ones I do and don't want. Just a few last things, I don't think I touched on them in the last video. So things like the wage budget. So I think when we started off, our wage budget was something like two or three thousand. But some teams had about four thousand per week, and they were the ones who were the big spenders. So if you go all the way back to that, one of the first few videos where I was going through some of the job offers I was getting. Um, but now we've got 33,000, which is obscene considering the, the standard of the league. Uh, if we look at our manager profile, so here we are, Rodrigo de la Vega. Preferred formation is definitely 442. We've only got the Continental Sea license. Now, I have to admit, what I've just done is I've just applied for. Um, the coaching course for the the B and the club said they'd, they'd pay it for me. Um, I'm just going to treat that as a parting gift from them because I think what happens is when you move clubs, you still carry on with the course. They must, you know, pay for it up front. Um, and here are our kind of our attributes. Nothing particularly good because I guess we're only Continental C. It's a relatively low rep uh, league, so you don't develop as much as you would do playing the kind of equivalent somewhere else. But some some reasonable uh, attributes uh, there. If we look at oh relationships, lots of good opinions, no particularly bad opinions. We've not ruffled enough feathers. I think when we can move to a new club, we'll start doing that. We'll be a bit more outspoken. We'll um, start disrespecting all the other managers around us to unsettle them. I think is what we'll go for. Uh, look at the overview of the um, stats. So we. Been at the humpbacks for 2,358 days. So we've been here since 2018, so late 2018. It's now 2024. So we spent about six years in our seventh season with the humpbacks. That's a pretty good stint uh, with one club. Uh, during that time, we've only actually played 275 matches uh, with them because. Um, it's just a smaller amount of games per season because the way the leagues um, actually set up, because it's, each league's got quite a small number of teams. Um, it's not like a 48-game season or a 44-game season or whatever that some of the uh, standard leagues kind of have. We've got the cup games, but they're kind of variable. So some seasons we didn't get particularly far in the cup. So only 275 games across all of that. But in that process we earned 400,000. Can you imagine earning a bit shy of um, half a million pounds to spend six years in a tropical paradise? Playing, well, watching football, not even playing it. I think I could do that job. If anyone wants to offer me that job, I have zero coaching badges or experience. I'm massively unfit, so I won't be able to be like a player ma manager or anything like that. And I'm not particularly good in the heat, but I would for 400,000 over six years in Tahiti and French Polynesia. I would do that. I would make that sacrifice. <coughs> Sorry, so in that time, we've not done much business because it's not a very active league in terms of transfers. It will eventually get better and better. And I'm hoping us moving away from the humpbacks will help because maybe the new manager will spend more and players will move a bit and it'll shift things. But we've uh, bought 19 but only ever paid 1,700 and sold 17 um, apparently for 11,500 which makes no sense because when you look down here the highest fee we received was 12,000 for Jack Tuchin all the way back in 2022 and he's not had an illustrious career since. So apparently we got paid more than our highest value for all our sales is. That's not right. Uh, clearly some estimations going on. The most we've ever spent though is about £500 for you and Andre, and that was an absolute bargain. Look at him. 
I don't think he will stay in French Polynesia. I think he's going to be picked up by a team somewhere else. He could go to New Zealand. He might end up in Asia somewhere. I think someone's going to come in for him. And yeah, that's about 66% win percentage plus 362 goal difference. We've won nine cups, two leagues, and one promotion. Never been relegated. Um, it's not a bad, bad record. Second, fifth, sixth, third, first, and first. Plenty of trophies. The sextuplet that season. That will, I was going to say it's going to be hard to beat. That's almost impossible to beat. Um, we would need to win the Club World Championship on the end of this. That's the only way we could beat that. That would be us completing football manager essentially at that stage. So yeah, I'm quite happy with what we've done, how that we've grown. We've kind of reached the limits of what we can do with one club. Now we need to get the other clubs to be a little bit stronger. I've done a few things as well before I, I move on. I've made a backup save of this. Um, not so I can go back and change my mind or anything like that, uh, but mainly because um, if I ever wanted to play it offline and just pick up, I could do. Uh, but also if I needed to go back and check any stats and things like that, I can do that. What I normally do is, <clears throat> sorry, um, what I normally do every day, every day, every season is I put a backup save in there and label it for that year so I can always go back and check something or I can go back and export the team if I ever wanted to do anything online with it so I've done that so there's that little branch that divergence there and what I've also done because I am a kind manager is I've gone through the humpbacks and see here I've got it on the contract view and I've gone and offered new contracts to most of the key players there's a few who weren't so Quentin Beauvalet wouldn't doesn't want to talk because he's not been playing enough. Uh, but the key ones who were had their contract running out this season, I've given at least another two years to. So every player's got between one to, I think, four seasons. Um, four, no, one to three seasons on their contract. So Andre's here till 2017. So it's McIntyre, Gerard, Yannin, McCormack. Um, sorry, not McCormack. McCormack's got two years and so on. So we've tied up a lot of the key players. So they don't have to sell. And they're not going to run out and leave on a free. They're either going to be bought, which I think some I think some of the managers might get rid of them because they don't value them. But because they've got high values now, look at this. Andre's 275,000. McIntyre's 86. Jared and Yannin are a bit lower. Well, Yannin's like 105. But I reckon they're I think they're criminally underrated by the game. This is where real you know, players are better than the actual AI in that we can see the value that's there in the players much better than they can. That's why Football Manager as a game is really well suited to taking like a money ball approach. Um, if you like the whole money ball approach about finding value that other teams don't find in players and maximising your team approach, there's a Dictate the Game series on money ball by FN Vars, which is really good. So you might want to apply that to your own game. But yeah, I think some of these players will leave, even though we've put these contracts on them. But hopefully it means when they leave, the club gets something and it stimulates the kind of football economy a little bit. Right. Let's, let's do this. I was tempted to play a couple more games just to make sure we finish top of the table. I'll show you that. See, this is how much I'm hesitating to do it. Just... So currently, because we've got two games in hand, we're not top of the table. So on our thing, it'll say we resigned when we were second. It would have been nice to resign when we were first, um, but we would have been, basically. With two games and only four points to make up, we would have done. That's because of the Club World Championship, which was won by Liverpool. We still have um, Mo Salah playing. Right, now I'm going to do it. Definitely going to do it. No more teasing. Good luck, humpbacks. It's been fun. Ooh, that feels weird. Really, really weird. Interesting. So, in terms of who's gonna take over, yeah. Sad to see me go. It was amazing for the club. Wasn't I just? Where's the general? Yeah, legend. Of course, they were sad to see me go. Uh, 
Uh, Mark Piri, our assistant manager, who's been with us for a while, is the caretaker. And the potential successor is James Whitefield from Takara Terrors. It's again Baron. I if he was a player before. Uh, manager all, all the way, I think. So he might be the favourite. So he's taken the Takaro Terrors up. So he, they've, if apparently he's a favourite, he's like one of the outsiders, not a well-established uh, manager. And George Redinut Tuamutan also, he's got good mentals. What's he done with himself? So unemployed, barrel cats for a year, more peer for a year. I hope they don't appoint him because he's terrible. He's not done anything. He got relegated. And at least Whitefield got promoted. Hmm. See, our runners up got them promoted through the thing. So I'm a bit sad there's not a better quality of manager being associated with the team. But that's not our problem anymore. Right, look at our schedule. When do we next play a match? It's not until 2015 in April. So what we could probably do is go on holiday till the start of March. Because obviously you've got to pick the squad a couple of weeks beforehand, normally like about 10 days. So that'll give us enough time. Mass Exodus. I'm going to make a note of this just so I can pick them up again later on. So if I can see if I can get them as, as good staff for my new team. That's another thing. Stick everyone. Can't, can't add them to a some a national manager. I'd have a short list. I'll go back and I'll add them. I won't miss what happens. We'll do updates on the humpbacks at the end of every season now. Anyway, sorry, this is dragging on because I'm just sad. I've left, and now we can't see any jobs. There we go. So Magdalena, Naruto, Pukapuka, Jupiter's, and the humpbacks. Puka Puka, second in the championship, they would be a nice easy um, team in terms of getting up. We could do something with them. Hum uh, the Jupiters are a tiny, tiny squad in the championship. They could be a good one to try and sort of rejuvenate. We'll see if they come in with an offer. The Feral Cats what we really want, so we'll, we'll see. Thanks. Well, actually, now I'll put it on. Holiday, so you can see I've gone on holiday. So we're going to apply for any club, and we're going to come back on that's not right, is it? Yeah, almost added like an extra year onto that then. March 10th. When's the Ides of March? Is it March 4th or March 5th? No, one of them. Right, so here we go. Thanks for watching this bit. I'll probably come back in this... Well, I say I probably... I will come back in this video with some of the job offers and things like that. Um, and I'll see you in a second or two. So that didn't take very long. It's been 10 days or something like that. Um, and we've been offered an interview with the Takaroa Territory Terrors, which I think means that, let's do a quick check. Yeah, they appointed James Whitefield. So at least they got the better of the two managers they were being linked with. Um, in terms of other jobs out there, not much else has changed, but from Pepites is on there. So let's have a look and see what they say. They're already in the Premiership, they're 14th. Premiership. They've got a lot of players on loan from like Moria and places like that. Um, you've never managed a club of a modest size and reputation. I mean, the humpbacks were at that size until I turned them into a Polynesian juggernaut, but 
Do you have a plenty of experience with your clubs? I'm not going to beg and say I want them to look beyond. I can... I'm not going to insult them either. Yeah. I manage one team. Well, one team and a national team. And that one team... We're amazing. Yeah, I'm loyal. Dropping down. New challenge. Um, careful of doing both, because I've done both. Yeah. Yeah. I'm well versed in dealing with financial trouble. Basically, the humbacks were in financial trouble for five out of six years. Can I? Yes. Immediately? Yeah, immediately. Get straight into it. See if I can save their season a bit. I want to develop young players, and I'd like to be able to sign young players. I don't want to sign high-profile players because I have no idea what that means in the context of French Polynesia. I don't want to say anything about defensive football because I don't want to be judged on that. Yeah, I can avoid the drop. Wage budget of 3,799, so almost 10 times less than what we had at the humpbacks. This will take a little bit of getting used to if we were to move. Yeah, I'm happy with that, because they don't have any more money. There. So I imagine they're going to offer me that job. Um, and when they do, I'll probably... Oh, I definitely want to think about it. I will probably um, delay it. I think you can delay it for almost two weeks. So I might do that, just see what else comes up before I have to make a decision. Oh, Papite, want to offer me the job? I just want to see what they've got. I didn't even have a chance to stop the recording then. Yeah, tremendous loyalty. New challenge. Capable. Forge ahead. Better than your last manager with the fans. Oh, they, they were in a lot of financial trouble. Skip that one too quickly. They got docked points. Yeah, I can do that. Take charge straight away. Don't want to know about any of those things. Yep, yeah, it's uh, 6,000, so almost twice the budget of the other one. No request. I'm not going to go to Papite. Not a mainlander. It's not going to happen. Right, I'm going to go on holiday again and see what happens. Okay, some slight sort of. Um, changing my mind here. So originally, I think in the last video or video before, I said probably wouldn't take on Takaro Terrors because we're already in the Premiership. And then they kind of tempted me in this one because in the Premiership I could do something with them. I could play against the Humpbacks. Um, went through the interview just then. And I've already delayed them once. Uh, Papita also tried to offer me the job and rejected them. I'm going to reject because if I take over, then let's just quickly look at the Premiership. You've got the Humpbacks, who are from the Austral Islands. Then you go all the way down, and you've got the Takaro Terrors, who are... Where are they from? Uh, Tuamotis, and you've also got Uapoa, who are from Marquesa, and you've got Fatahuku, who I think are also from Marquesa as well. Yeah. So, there's not many teams in the Premiership that aren't already... Like Tahitian. So if I take over the Takaro Terrors, I'm taking over a team that's already made it there. And they might survive. And what I'm really hoping is uh, Fatahuku, Uopo, and the Terrors all survive. At least one of those three will survive. Um, but what I don't want to do is take over the work someone else has... Someone else. One of the air managers already done. When actually what I could do is I could go into the championship or below and take up another team that didn't have a chance of getting here and get more of them kind of at the table. So they, more of these teams will benefit and will get more competition from these smaller uh, island sides. So 
that's why I'm going to say no to them. Um, and then when I come back, it should hopefully be for when we actually got an offer from a, a different club. I'm still holding out for the feral cats, really, just because their badge is too nice. So walk away. Thank you, but no thank you, Terrace. I'll be back in a second or two for you, but potentially quite a long time uh, for me. Okay, so we're back. It's been a short while for you, but quite a while for me, because it's been an absolute pain trying to sort out this holidaying and applying for appropriate jobs. Um, if you go to you know my profile, go on holiday, you can apply for... I'm not going to go on holiday, but I'll show you. Any club, top division, higher, lower, bottom. Other than top and bottom, it's kind of difficult to work out what's what. So I didn't want to be applying for all the Tahitian jobs. So I couldn't just apply for all of them. I didn't want to be applying for jobs in the bottom division, I guess, because there are no teams I can take over in the bottom division anymore in the kind of silver developmental. They're all under 23s now, I think. So is a bit, was it higher? Would that give me championship and the gold? Or would I need lower to get the gold? as well? It was really difficult. And also I had the international stuff. So if you notice as well on here, the international thing's gone because I had to resign because working out the holidays and the coming back for the team selections just wasn't, really wasn't working. I've had a holiday a couple of times and it was causing this weird book as well in that I was applying for some jobs, but because I also had the manager, the international manager job, it was kind of extending the period of time. So in one attempt, um, one of the teams on here, I won't say which one yet, I applied for the job went on holiday, didn't actually get the interview until um, December 2025. So I think I applied for the job in May and then got the interview in December. And I think it's because of the international manager. I don't know why. It just seemed to have had a, an impact. Um, but I've been applying for a few teams. I've been trying to keep it to non titian teams, not in the top flight. I was trying to stay away from teams in the under 23s unless there was an offer that was particularly good and that's what we've got. So basically everyone on here at some point has offered us a job or an interview. From the Eels, San Pedro to the Corollas, all these teams here have offered us a job. But the one we're going to go for, do your own drum roll, is the Totengengi Wings. They're in the under 23s, the golds, which is something I said I'd probably try and stay away from because playing the under 23s for seasons isn't necessarily going to be the most entertaining. And then we've got the kind of playoff um, to go through. But they're one of the lowest teams we can take out. And I just think the logo is really nice. Really like it. Quite like the kit as well. A little Reebok kit with the wings thing. Is there a way to get a bigger view of that? There we go. I just quite like that. So, um, Tosin Gengi is essentially a long, thin island, um, an atoll with a few little islands dotted around it in the Gambier Islands. Uh, check out the Gambier Island video if you want to learn more about it. But basically, it's where one of the their last kind of airports are in French Polynesia. So you can fly to the Titian mainland. There's also uh, a larger strip on Tosin Gengi. It's near uh, Mangareva as well, which is one of the kind of rival Gambier Islands we've got here. And it's the kind of stop-off point if you want to get all the way over to the Cook Islands. So you've got to fly to Tertengegi and then get on a, I was going to say a ferry, but it's a bit longer than a ferry trip to get to the Cook Islands from there still. So nicknamed the Airliners. If we look at their kind of profile, I think it's pretty much all the way through... The landmarks there. They've never left the under 23 development gold. They're not a huge team. They play at the Aerodome, which is the 807 all seater, so they've expanded it. It's a sand pitch, which could be interesting. Um, sand's one of the ones that's a bit difficult on the eye, so I might have to deal with some of the graphics for that. But I think they'll be a good one to take on Gambier, one of the smaller nations. They've got a rival in this league in, in the under 23s in um, Mangareva. So we've got a few real teams to play. So these are ones I'll probably come back for the matches. I'll probably won't focus too much on the under 23s. The under 23s themselves are pretty strong. So the last two years, the Humpbacks under 23s won it. 
than the Eels, and they've got his chance when they were here. So it could be interesting, this. So we're going to be offered, finalise that. Uh, I think we're going to get something like, there we go. We're going to get something like £2,000 as our um, wage budget. So there we are, we're £60,000 in debt. We get to spend just over 2000 or We're almost spending all of that already. I'm not going to go through the squad too much, but basically there's not much of one. Um, squad view on there. We've got a few positions covered, but it's light. Our under-23s are pretty much gone. So what I'll do is I'll end it here. Now you know who we've got. The mystery's over. And then in the next video, I'll do a bit of a rundown of the club, what I'm going to do with them. And then we'll carry on. There might be a few days break here and there just because I've had a pretty difficult time at work. Um, just in terms of workload, nothing horrible is going on. It's just a busy time of year. So I might need a couple of days grace here and there. Uh, but hopefully we'll make a start with the wings very soon. Thanks very much.